With every new Star Wars book comes a list of Easter eggs, connections, and references that aren't major enough to warrant individual videos, but they're still fun to talk about, and Force Collector by Kevin Shinnick is no different. Today I'll be running through all of the smaller fun facts I found in the story. There will be spoilers ahead, so please be warned. Carr, the main character of the story, has the Force ability known as Psychometry. He can touch an object and it will show him significant moments from its history. That power was most famously shown in the Clone Wars episode The Hunt for Zero used by Quinlan Voss, but its earliest appearance was in the Star Wars Legends book The Courtship of Princess Leia. Carr claims to have a Stormtrooper helmet of a man named Blin who is said to have once been mind-tricked by a Jedi. I would say that could be the Stormtrooper from Mos Eisley, but he was featured in the book from a certain point of view as TD-110 and was later named in the Join the Resistance series of books as Wanton, so it sounds like Carr was duped, or it's just a different trooper. Carr literally um actually is a girl about Jedi history in this book, which makes it the most realistic Star Wars story ever told. Are we sure it's a work of fiction? Carr has a broken wooden staff with a silver top that was once wielded like a lightsaber, and through the Force, its user could be heard mumbling about the Force, although he was not a Jedi. I think that's meant to be Chirrut's staff. Carr's friend Maisie gives him her father's drafting tool, and when he touches it, he sees that it was used in construction on a snowy planet. Maisie's father works for the First Order, so he was very likely involved in the construction of Starkiller Base. Carr mentions various planets as rumored sites of Jedi Last Stands, including Cato Nemoidia, where Plo Koon died, Megiddo, where Ki-Adi Mundi was overwhelmed, Seleucami, where Stas Ali crashed, and Collar, where Depa Balaba was killed in the Kanan comic. Carr's math teacher at school is a given, a species known to be incredibly mathematically gifted. We meet the possible son of a clone trooper. I would say that it's still not totally confirmed that clones can have children because the man making the claim had no proof, but we also have no reason to distrust him. I get asked all the time if clones can reproduce, and I'd say this at least makes it far more likely. Carr comes across the cane of Tion Medon, the port administrator of Pow City, seen in Revenge of the Sith. Through the Force, we see a little bit more of his conversation with Obi-Wan. Someone on Utapau references Luke Skywalker at the Battle of Jakku pulling Star Destroyers out of the sky. As far as we know, Luke wasn't actually at Jakku, but a similar in-universe story is told about him in the book The Legends of Luke Skywalker. Miri Allen tattoos are mentioned being applied when a member of their species completes a certain task, and a high number of tattoos was an indicator of status. That was all first established in Legends. The phrase, as quick as a teak on a shopping spree, is used. The teak were already made canon in the book Last Shot, but they were originally from Ewoks, the battle for Endor, where they were shown to be incredibly fast. This feels like something that might be known already and I just missed it, but the gate at Nema Outpost is said to be a hut design, which is why it matches similar hut locations on planets like Tatooine or Teth. A Taylander shuttle is seen on Jakku, a ship that first appeared in Attack of the Clones and was used prominently in the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. Carr visits Jakku while Rey is still on the planet, and he explores the Falcon, finding the training remote and getting a vision of more of the scene with Luke and Obi-Wan training. He also visits Obadiah and the crash site of sifo shuttle after a pike brags to him about being descended from the people who shot the Jedi Master down. He finds what's left of the Jedi T6 shuttle 775519 and discovers a hollow projector with the final words of sifo -Dyas. He tried to tell the Jedi Council of his order for the clone army, but the message was never received. Silman, the missing aide of Chancellor Valorum from the Clone Wars episodes that first explored sifo disappearance, is also mentioned. Carr meets Nabrin Leeds at a bar on Obadiah, who tells him the story of seeing a Jedi use his lightsaber to cut off an Aqualish's arm. Leeds was the more Syrian character briefly seen in A New Hope. Carr then visits Doc Ondar on Batu, where he speaks with him through his translator, a dark-skinned woman with a shaved head. She first appeared in the Galaxy's Edge comic by Ethan Sachs. Doc gives Carr a broken lightsaber in exchange for a favor. The lightsaber once belonged to the Grand Inquisitor, and its damage matches what happened to it in Star Wars Rebels. The favor Carr performs is delivering a package to Maz Kanata. It winds up being 3PO's missing arm from his one-shot comic, the story which told us about how he got the red arm. She wonders how Doc possibly could have gotten the arm out of that creature's belly. Maz also shows Carr Luke's Yavin medal, which was apparently given to her by Han when he couldn't pay his bar tab, although he claimed it was his. Maybe Maz gives the medal back to Leia in The Rise of Skywalker, since we see one of them in the teaser. Carr visits the planet Kajimi, which will be seen in Episode 9. Kajimi City is high atop Mount Izukika. 
And those are all the smaller details I picked out of Force Collector. If you're interested in listening to the book for free, you can do that by clicking on the link in the description or by visiting www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. The sound design on the Star Wars audiobooks is always really great with music and sound effects. It's like listening to a movie. It's out today, and if you sign up for a free 30-day trial, you'll get a credit for one free audiobook, and you can use it on Force Collector, or you can use it on any number of other Star Wars books, or get any book you want. The point is, you get a free audiobook, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.